Hello everybody, Jim here, coming to you once again from my apartment here in Tokyo on a fairly bright and sunny afternoon. I'm sipping some coffee, playing some games, and talking to my microphone because for some odd reason people seem to like it when I do that. Um, but today I was sitting here trying to think of a, uh, a suitable topic to talk about, and I settled on the the topic of money on YouTube, which is something uh, I guess I've kind of wanted to discuss for a while now, uh, but have not yet. Um, it's sort of a sensitive topic for some people, others not so much. Um, some people, I don't know, almost uh, it seems like they treat their favorite smaller YouTubers like maybe people would treat their favorite local bands or something where they love the band, but once they got signed and they started uh, putting out records and making money, you know, you're, you sold out. You're not doing it for the love of the music anymore. Now you're making money and uh, that's no good. Uh, so I wanted to know what, uh, how my audience feels about it um, because I've been on YouTube for quite a long time now and I've been um, at least watching YouTube since 2006 and producing content, quote-unquote, making videos on YouTube since, I want to say, like, 2009, this channel since 2011. And I've seen, like, a lot of changes, as, you know, most of the old-timers have. And, I don't know, sometimes it's kind of questionable, like, were they for the better or for the worse? And one of those things that comes up a lot is money on YouTube and people's pursuit of money on YouTube, I think is the bigger thing. It's not necessarily the worst thing in the world that people are making money through YouTube, um, but what will they do in the pursuit of that money that I think is is something that uh, most people find contentious. Um, and it raises an interesting question to me that um, if you found out that your favorite YouTuber was only producing their content at this point for the money and that if there was no money they would stop and they would move on to you know something else some job or or something but they would uh you know cease producing youtube content how would that make you feel about that content creator and would it would it hamper your enjoyment of the videos they produce so just as an example um i've heard it said numerous times that the only reason that James Rolfe continues to portray the angry video game nerd and to um, be in other videos in, on Cinemasker is because that's his livelihood now. Uh, he, that's how he makes his living and you know takes care of his family and everything. So if you are a huge Cinemasker fan, does that hamper your enjoyment of Cinemasker, of angry video game nerd videos and the like? Because... Uh, early on in the days of YouTube, I was also a big fan of Angry Video Game Nerd. Watched all those videos, thought it was awesome. One of the pioneers of that style of content on YouTube. And I still like AVGN. It's not, you know, obviously it's not the same as it used to be. Uh, I'm not such a big fan of Cinemasker anymore. Like, I most of the, the content that gets put out on Cinemasker, for me at least, is kind of superfluous. It's, it's uninteresting. I really only like... AVGN, and then when James Rolfe does his uh, movie reviews absent any other people, you know, he just does his little reviews and retrospectives, and I like those. Those are almost feel like more of a, almost like an educational thing, like you're, he should be teaching a film course or something, as opposed to, you know, uh, just, you know, being being the, uh, the guy on YouTube now. But, you know, if it comes to light, uh, or maybe it already has, who knows, but if that's the case, if he's only making those videos because of the money, does that hurt your enjoyment of the videos? Or substitute Cinemasker with whatever your favorite channel might be. I watch a lot of movie channels. I watch stuff like uh, Red Letter Media, a uh, channel I like a lot, Stitched Together Productions, uh, Brandon Tenold, um, and you know a bunch of other various uh, movie review channels. And they're all they're all monetized. They all make money off of YouTube. And they all have Patreons, and they make some money off Patreon as well. And so, 
I don't know, I guess maybe like in those cases, perhaps there's like a mix of like passion, you know, for like film and film review and all that kind of stuff. And the bonus that you can get paid for doing this thing that you're really passionate about. So for instance, like lots of the big gaming channels, you would talk about like, we talked about Cinemasker, you could talk about like Metal Jesus or uh, RGT85 or think of like any bigger well-known gaming channel. They're making money. They're making money for making their videos. And so I guess the, the question is, okay, are you make the money is like a nice little bonus. And what you really showed up for is the passion of gaming, because I think the, the story is the same for a lot of people. When we, we first got started on YouTube, which was right around when YouTube first got started, the idea of making money on YouTube, it wasn't present. Like I, even when I started this channel, like 2011, the idea of making you, you know, money on YouTube was like so alien to me. Um, it was just kind of cool that there was, you know, there's a video hosting site that'll host your videos for free. Um, because when I was a kid, if me and my friends ever got our hands on a video camera, we were gonna, you know, screw around with it and make some videos. And we would even make little audio recordings, like little audio shows, now that I think about it. And we would do these things just to entertain ourselves, you know. And, um, you know, we would, of course, go watch, like, little, you know, cartoons and other things on, like, new grounds and stuff like that, whatever video hosting sites were around. Um, but we didn't, you know, if we would have known then that there was going to be a video hosting site where all those stupid little videos you're making and all those little recordings you do, you can just post them there. And then anybody that wants to can watch them and everything. We would have probably thought that was pretty cool. Um, so when I first started putting out videos on YouTube, that was kind of the mentality. Oh, it's cool that there is a video hosting site that will put your videos on there for free. And the idea of making money was not nowhere in our heads. Um, but somewhere down the line, it became more and more common knowledge that if you reach a certain level, a number of subscribers or, or uh, watch time, whatever, you can partner with YouTube and then you can make money. And it was honestly, it was it was pittance. Like when I first got my channel partnered, I think I had like 3000 subscribers and <laughs> you make literally like like a few bucks a month. Like it was, you know, it's some change, but it was just sort of like the idea of like, oh, OK, this I'm partnered now. You know, there's the potential there, whatever. Um, but yeah, it was like literally a couple of bucks a month. So it was like, who the hell cares? I mean, AdSense doesn't even pay out unless you have a hundred bucks in it. So it was like, you'd make these videos, you <laughs> accue that revenue, and then you may never get it. If you just stop making videos and you don't even have a hundred bucks in there, you're just never going to see that money. So like, it wasn't a big deal, um, until like you could see channels getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they get to the point where they're potentially making like thousands of dollars a month and then you throw patreon into the mix and then some people are making thousands of dollars a month on patreon and so the money just keeps going up and up and up and so there's sort of the um kind of the the impression that people get that like once you get to that level where you're making lots of money you're only doing it for the money even though for years some of these people were creating video content for no money and then eventually it turned into some money, which you think would be like, like uh, something to to celebrate, right? Like somebody who is doing something just for the passion. Now, I mean, evidently they're still passionate about it, but they also get to make like a nice little living off of it, um, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like, I don't know, almost like a new a new economy, a new way to like make a living, like online through like content creation and things like that. Um, so. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think most people do, um, but other people not so much. Again, it's kind of like the local band analogy. You don't like to see the local band sell out and start making uh, tons of money. Um, and then there are some channels where like that's the intention all along is to just make money. Like they're, you know, they get started on YouTube with a vision that it's gonna make some money. And I actually have a personal account of this um, for those of you that will recall when I was um, uh, producing videos on a different channel called Japan Headlines, uh, while I was doing that, I was actually um, working at a company called uh, Pacific Bridge Media and Consulting uh, here in Tokyo, and they were mostly producing and pitching content for Allied Press. So they were producing content for television, and the owner of the company 
was a guy that he was a news guy like i think he had worked for some newspapers and things and mainly he was trying to create a like a journalistic uh product and obviously you know he's running his company he wants it to be profitable so when i got there and he wanted me to start doing things with social media and in particular youtube um i was you know more than happy to do that i was like all right i already have an interest in youtube i'm already been producing videos and stuff for a few years uh, i would like to do this uh so their channel was floundering i think they had 40 subscribers after publishing like 60 videos so they were not getting any traction um so i was like okay you know i had some ideas i was like well we can do this differently we can do that we can make these more interesting and fun and that'll get us maybe bring in more subscribers and things and um he was like all right and he was like uh when do we start making money because <laughs> that was his like he wants this to turn into another source of revenue for his company and i had to be honest with him i was like i have no idea <laughs> like i have not been successful at making at that point i had not been successful at all at making money on youtube so i couldn't you know blow smoke up his ass and be like oh man you're gonna be rolling in it buddy <laughs> this youtube thing this is this is the the hot ticket um, so I had to be like, I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be pretty slow. I mean, I'll get you. I think I can get you to over a thousand subscribers and stuff pretty quickly. I could probably get you partnered pretty quickly. Um, but even once you're partnered, unless you have like a big audience or you get some viral videos and things like you're not going to really make any money, um, which, you know, I, I guess I'm glad I was I was honest with him because uh, if I would have given him the false impression that I could have made him a lot of money he might have been kind of angry but that was the one time where that was sort of the thought process for me because with this channel i like i said i started this channel in 2011 without even the the hint of an idea that it could ever make money um and to this day my my youtube channel um doesn't really make like very much money i make uh, a decent chunk of money on patreon which is awesome but YouTube, I mean, the best month I've ever had on YouTube, I got like 250,000 views that month. And I think I made just under $500. So in my my average month on YouTube, uh, the ad revenue is like between $200 and $300, which is awesome. That's a nice little bit of money. You know, you can pay your utilities with that. But it's not like a replacement for a job or anything. I'm not, you know, there are people that have uh, audiences that are huge, half a million, a million, or multiple millions of subscribers. So as long as they keep videos coming out, they can actually make a pretty decent living. I'm not in that position yet. I, you know, uh, the whole money-making aspect hasn't really been the focus of my channel. But while I was working on Japan headlines, that was something in my head. I had to think how do you actually grow a channel like what do people do and how do you turn it into something that makes money so i had to start thinking in terms of that i was like well we gotta um change the way the format of the videos and we have to do them this way and they have to be the editing has to change and the music has to change and the subject matter has to be more fun and exciting and it has to be stuff that you know you can you know film somewhere and then maybe have like you know this kind of cool stuff in the thumbnail or maybe like even like some hot chicks in the thumbnail that'd be pretty good right let's go to this car show let's go to a women's wrestling event let's go you know i was pitching all these ideas i was so that was the first time ever that i had to think in those terms of how do you grow this audience and how do you turn it into something that makes money because all of a sudden out of nowhere like that was my job and so that um that whole thought process is it's less i don't know it's like i like to think that a lot of what's done on youtube is like a passion project or it's like an artistic endeavor or something like that but when you're in that mindset of i'm gonna create this thing and i gotta figure out how it grows an audience and how it makes money that's less of an artistic pursuit and that's more of like a marketing thing like you become less of a content creator and more of a marketer. So I don't know. It was an interesting experience for me. Like that the first and only time really that uh, with my, my time on YouTube that the thought process wasn't, okay, what do I want to do? The thought process is what can I do in order to make this something that, uh, you know, gets views and makes money. So it was an interesting thought process. 
Um, and some YouTube channels are operated that way. Some people come onto YouTube with that express uh, intent and purpose. I want to grow this channel and make money, so they, you know, right out of the gate, they've got, you know, their logos, their catchphrases, hey, we're going to be putting out merch, we're going to be doing all these things. Um, you know, it could be like some sort of corporate media, it could be some like website that was popular enough and now they're publishing content on YouTube. Or it could be like someone who's a celebrity in some other, you know, aspect, you know, pro wrestlers and things like that, actors and musicians that have YouTube channels and it's just, you know, it's a means to make some, some extra money and stuff. Use their already, um, you know, their status as someone well known to attract an audience on a different form and make some more money. Um, so yeah. So how do you feel about that? How do you, I mean, you could separate that into two camps. The, like the indie band kind of analogy where, you know, they started out, you know, smaller channel, you know, going along, going along, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're a bigger channel and they're making money. And you could argue potentially that now the only reason they're making YouTube videos is because there's money in it. And if the money went away, they'd go away versus people and entities that come onto YouTube with the express intent of making money. You know, there's never any sort of, you know, delusion that there was ever any other purpose other than just turning YouTube into something profitable. And uh, even... I probably have some people in the audience that make a bit of money on YouTube. So, I mean, you can tell me, like, is that your main motivation to be on YouTube is to make money? Or is the money just like a, a happy accident? It's a nice little bonus, uh, but it's not like the linchpin of your, your career on YouTube. I can just, I can say for myself, um, again, I started YouTube with no intentions of making any money. Um, at this juncture of my quote unquote YouTube career, uh, I make a decent little bit of money for, for myself, and uh, it's very nice. It's very much appreciated. Never thought that that was actually going to be like a scenario someday. Um, but if it went away, I would still be more than happy to make my YouTube videos, just as I was, I don't know, 2011, 2012. I'd be perfectly happy to make my YouTube videos um, because they're sort of a part of uh, my life now. Like, it's a fun... Kind of, it's my one chance to do something kind of creative and artistic. Well, not necessarily, because I, you know, in my job, I can sometimes be given like the leeway to to be creative. Um, but you know, again, that's that's another thing. Some people, YouTube is quote unquote their job, and that's their sole source of income. So I guess it's more justifiable for them that they would do it specifically for the money. For me, though, I I have a job. It's it's a nice job, and uh, I enjoy it, and uh, I get paid well. So. Um, I'm not, like, you know, desperate for money. If this YouTube thing doesn't work out, I'll be ruined. Um, so I'm not in that camp. But yeah, let me know. What are your thoughts? Do you think YouTube... Do you think money ruined YouTube and YouTubers? Or do you think it made it better? Do you think it attracted people with, like, talent and technical skills that uh, otherwise might not have been drawn to making video content if there wasn't some money in it for them? You know, you can... You tell me. Um... The way I feel about it, if I'm watching video content on YouTube, which I quite often am, um, as long as I'm entertained by it, or educated, or enlightened, or inspired by it, um, I don't, I don't think too much on the motivations of the content creator, um, if they're making money or not, or if that's the only reason they're doing it or not. Um, that I don't really consider that. I, I just consider how I uh, might have enjoyed the content. And uh, that's, as, that's as far as I think it through. I don't really make any sort of like moral judgments about um, why somebody made the video in the first place. Uh, but you can tell me down in the comments how you feel about it. I'd sure love to know. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for today. I've got some coffee sitting here that needs to be drank. Uh, so thanks everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, take care everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>